This video will cover the last word problems from section 4.3. A woman bought some large frames for $10 each and some small frames for $4 each at a closeout sale. If she bought 22 frames for $118, find out how many of each type she bought. How many of each type she bought is what we're looking for. So that's going to be our naming of the variable. I'm going to call L the number of large frames and S the number of small frames. We need to put this information together. There's two things going on here. One is the fact that she bought a total of 22 frames. The 22 frames are made up of some large and some small. So one equation is just L plus S equals 22. The other equation has to do with the cost. Each large one costs $10. So 10L represents how much the large frames would cost her. And each small frame costs $4. So 4S would represent how much each small one would cost her. Altogether, it's $118. This is a system of linear equations, which is very easily solved by elimination. I could multiply this by negative 10 and get negative 10L minus 10S equals negative 220. My L's are going to cancel out. This is negative 6S equals negative 102 solve by dividing both sides by negative 6 and s is 17. Now that means the number of small frames is 17. To find our number of large all we have to do is plug that back in here. You're looking at L plus 17 equals 22 so obviously the number of large frames is 5. Very similar problem here. This time instead of talking about frames we're talking about tickets. And in this problem, we sold 311 tickets. Student tickets cost 50 cents each. Non-student tickets cost $1.50. And here's our total receipts. So we're asked for how many of each type of ticket were sold. So these are going to be my variables. The number of student tickets, I'll call that S. The number of non-student tickets, I'll call that N. A total of 311 tickets were sold. That 311 is made up of some of the students plus the non-students to give us a total of 311. Then the money equation is the fact that each student ticket costs 50 cents. So 0.50 times S represents how much money was taken in on the student tickets. The non-student tickets cost $1.50. So $1.50N represents how much money was taken in from the non-students. And our total receipts were 385.50. If you just hate decimals, you could move the decimal two places to the right, which is what I'm going to do here. So this one now becomes 50S plus 150N. You have to move it two places to the right over here, which gives you 385.50. Now this and this are my two equations that make up my system. I'm going to use elimination. I'm going to multiply this by negative 50, which is negative 50S minus 50N equals negative 15,550. That's an equal sign. The S's cancel out. This is 100N equals 23,000. Divide both sides by 100. So N works out to be 230. So 230 non-student tickets were sold. To find out the number of student tickets, take this 230, plug it back in here, you're looking at S plus 230 equals 311. Subtract 230 from both sides, and S is 81. So 81 student tickets, 230 non-student tickets. At an office supply store, one customer bought seven writing tablets and four pens for 640. Another customer purchased two tablets and 19 pens for 540. Find the price of each. So our variables here are talking about the price of something, not the number of tablets and pens sold, the price. So the price of a tablet, we don't know, that is T. The price of a pen, we don't know, that is P. So what we have for our two equations relates to the fact that we have two different customers. This one customer bought seven of the tablets, 7T represents what it would cost her to buy seven tablets, plus 4P, that represents the cost for her pens, for a total cost of $6.40. This customer bought two tablets plus 
19 pens for $5.40. This one is one that we will do by elimination. I'm just going to multiply this by negative 2 and this by positive 7. It will give me negative 14t minus 8p equals negative 1280. Multiply the bottom by 7 here is 14t plus 133p equals 3780. Draw the line here. The t's cancel out. This is 125p. This is going to be 25. To solve for p, divide both sides by 125. And then think about what you're finding. You're finding the price. We're so used to just reducing the fraction and giving a fraction answer. But we're looking for price, which means this needs to go to a decimal. And it's the decimal point 2, which as far as money goes, is 20 cents, which I can write that way, or 20 cents. Then I want to put this point 2 back into, I'll go to the bottom equation, <clears throat> put this in for P, and this is 2T plus 19 times point 2 equals 540. So 2T plus 3 Point eight zero equals 540. Subtract 380 from both sides, and that's 1.6. Divide by 2 is going to be t equals 0.8, or 80 cents. So each tablet costs 80 cents. Each pen costs 20 cents. These last two deal with distance equals rate times time, which means we're back to using a chart. And the two scenarios here are the plane traveling with the wind and traveling against the wind. So it says the plane takes three hours to travel 2,700 miles with the wind. So this information is going to go in my with the wind row. Three hours is time. Distance of 2,700 goes right here. And that's as far as I'm going to get for that row. The return trip takes five hours against the wind. No other distance is mentioned, so we are to assume that this plane is traveling the exact same distance. Now as far as our variables go, we're going to have two things. We're going to have the plane and the wind. Plane is P and the wind is W. When you are asked to find the rate for with the wind, you have to think about the fact that the wind is helping the plane. So the rate for with the wind is P plus W. That stands for plane plus wind. Against the wind, the wind is hurting the plane. So it is plane minus w. And that is our chart. We know we have this formula, distance equals rate times time. So my equations will come from using this. Distance equals the rate times the time. So it's p plus w times 3 equals 2,700. That's one of my equations. My other equation is P minus W times 5 equals 2700. Now you have two choices here. What will make the numbers a little smaller rather than distributing and solving from there. I'm going to divide this side by 3, divide this side by 3. Those 3's cancel. So I just have P plus W equals 900. And same thing here, divide by 5. 5's cancel out, gives me P minus W equals 540. This is nice now because using elimination, I don't have to multiply by anything. All I have to do is just add these up. The W is cancel. This is 2P equals 1440. Divide both sides by 2. So P, which is the plane, is 720 miles per hour. Then I can plug this into either of these equations, put 720 right here, 720 plus W equals 900. It's going to give me a wind of 180 miles per hour. Very similar problem. We're still traveling with the wind and against the wind. So the plane traveled 2,670 miles with the wind in five hours. So with the wind, 2,670 goes here, five hours goes here. And 2350 miles against the wind, so this time the plane did not travel the same amount, in the same amount of time. So this was five hours, this is five hours. 
my rates are like they were on the last problem. With the win is P plus W. Against the win is P minus W. We will use distance equals rate times time. And this problem will finish exactly the way number 11 did. So this will be P plus W times 5 equals 2,670. The other is P minus W times 5 equals 2,350. I'm going to divide the top here by 5, and I will have P plus W equals 534. Divide this one by 5, and I will have P minus W equals 470. This is set up perfectly to use elimination. Just add them up. This cancels, and P equals 1004. And I'm sorry, not P, 2P. Divide both sides by 2, and P equals 502. And plug back in, and you will find out that the wind is 32. And both of these are miles per hour.